the stereospecific requirements of the E2 elimination are very clearly evident in cyclic compounds such as the cyclohexane shown here in its chair form. What we'll learn is that in order to achieve the necessary antiperiplanarity, the groups that leave, the hydrogen atom that's deprotonated by a base and the leaving group X, must both occupy axial positions on adjacent carbon atoms where the new double bond will form. That's most evident if we look at this Newman projection, which is viewed along the perspective shown here. So the two carbon atoms that I've highlighted, the bridge that's up in front and the bridge carbon that's down in back, are the one that's up there in front and the one that's down in back there. And we can see just to the right of that, the groups X and H in axial position have that antiperiplanarity requirement. Notice that the R groups in equatorial positions do not have the antiperiplanarity requirement. So the groups that leave must be positioned axially, and so we can immediately see that the stereochemistry of the cyclohexane ring is going to have profound effects of both rates of reaction and the regiochemistry of where that double bond elimination could take place. For remember, there's not only this hydrogen on this atom, but there's hydrogens over here, and so the elimination might take place over here if that's the only place that this diaxial arrangement can be achieved. Let's look at some data to see how this all plays out. Under strongly basic conditions, ethoxide anion, that favors the E2 elimination reaction, these two substituted cyclohexanes behave much differently. They differ only in the stereochemistry of the chloride. It's pointing down in the top reactant and it's pointing up in the bottom reactant. Otherwise, every other substituent is exactly the same. In the top case, the reaction is fast, and in the bottom case, the reaction is slow. The position of the double bond changes. In the top case, the double bond is positioned there, meaning that it was this carbon-carbon bond where the elimination takes place, and so it must have been the hydrogen atom that's positioned here that's involved in the E2 elimination. In the bottom case, the double bond is positioned there, meaning that it's the elimination taking place across this carbon-carbon bond, and so the hydrogen atom must have been located on this carbon. Let's take a look at the three-dimensional structure of each of these reactants so we can understand the differences in both regiochemistry and rates of reaction. First, the top example, it's shown here. To understand a problem like this, we need to transform this line angle drawing into a 3D chair representation. I want to emphasize that you should always remember that for any line angle drawing of a cyclohexane, there are two ring-flipped forms that we must consider. In this case, we get lucky because the first one that we draw happens to have the chlorine in the axial position, and so it seems like it's ready to undergo E2 elimination, provided that on these positions there's another hydrogen that's axial. Indeed, when we put those implied hydrogens in place, we can find that there's an antiperiplanar relationship between those two groups, and there's another antiperiplanar relationship between those two groups, and the resulting cyclohexene places the double bond in the most highly substituted position, which would be elimination over this bond. Now, the reaction is fast compared to the other example, and the reason for that is because the chair form that we've drawn here is the most stable. It places the big isopropyl group in an equatorial position, the methyl group is in an equatorial position, and it's only this chlorine that is in the axial position. And so a confirmation well suited to undergo E2 elimination is also the most stable confirmation, and so that's why the, re the reaction is fast. If you want, you can pull up some three-dimensional structures to look at the relationship of these groups. The chlorine is in the axial position, the isopropyl group is in the equatorial position, and the methyl group is in the equatorial position. And so if we look down a Newman projection, we can see that there's an antiperiplanar relationship across the carbon-carbon bond where the elimination takes place. What about that example B, the one that underwent E2 elimination reaction slowly? We need to do the same thing. Let's take this line angle drawing and transform it into a chair form. The first one we draw, consistent with this stereochemistry, 
places all three substituents in equatorial positions. When we add the implied hydrogen, we immediately conclude that there are no antiperiplanar relationships in this conformation. And so we need to think about the ring-flipped form, and the ring-flipped form will take each of those equatorial substituents and place them axially. And now we can spot one antiperiplanar relationship that will take place across this carbon-carbon bond and place the double bond in this position. The reason the reaction is slow is because the reactive conformation is unstable. The most stable conformation is not reactive. If we look at three-dimensional models, what you'll see initially is the ring-flipped form in which all three substituents are in the equatorial conformation. You can see the reactive conformation by clicking the structure here. This is an energy-minimized structure. It clearly has the necessary antiperiplanar relationship between the chlorine and the hydrogen. However, notice that it doesn't have a chair form at all. It's a twist boat form, and the reason is is because it's impossible to place a methyl group, a chlorine, and a very large isopropyl group in axial positions. In this webcast, we learned that the constraints of cyclic geometry and the requirements of stereospecific E2 elimination can have dramatic impact on the reaction, both in terms of rates and regiochemistry. In the next webcast, we'll take a look at acyclic substrates.